Welcome to Aspire Test Prep's video on direct and inverse variation. Direct and inverse variation shows up a great deal on the redesigned SAT. To take best advantage of this video, you should go to www.aspiretestprep.com, complete the worksheet that says practice problems under direct and inverse variation, go ahead, check your answers using the answer key that's provided, and refer to this video for questions where you need extra help. So starting with number one, we have a baseball team where batting average is directly proportional to winning percentage. The team with the 221 batting average has a 485 winning percentage. What's going to be the winning percentage of a team with a 301 average? The important thing to start out is when we see a phrase like direct proportional, directly proportional, inversely proportional, or when something directly varies or inversely varies with something else, those are code words for certain equations that we have to write. So for instance, if A is directly proportional to B, then the equation is A equals KB. If A is inversely proportional to B, then that's A equals K over B. Or if I said A varies directly with B, that would be the red equation, or A varies inversely with B, that would be the green equation. We could get a little more complicated. We could say, for instance, X varies directly with, uh, let's say, the cube root of Y. So that would be like X equals K times the cube root of Y. It's important here to say that the order matters a lot. So on the red one, we would not be able to write B equals KA and have that be correct. That would be wrong. For the green one, we couldn't say B equals K over A um, because we have to do it in the order that's provided. So in our question here, batting average is directly proportional to winning percentage. So the average is directly proportional to the percentage. Then we can fill into the equation. A team with a 221 average has a 485 percentage. And we can go ahead and divide both sides by 0.485 and solve for K. So 0.221 divided by 0.485 is a really long decimal. 0.45567 and it goes on. But now that, al that allows us to rewrite the equation. A equals 0.456, let's say, times P. So all we did there is we replaced K with what K is equal to given the initial information that we had. Now the question is what will be the winning percentage when the batting average is 301? So we can go ahead and put 301 in for the average, keep our K. K stands for constant. Who knows why it doesn't use the letter C for constant, but K stands for const constant. And what that means is once you find K, it always stays the same. So that's why we were able to plug it into this new equation. And for any value of A, we could find an accompanying value of P. For any value of P, we could find a matching value of A. So now we've got... 0.301 equals 0.456p. We can divide both sides by 0.456. And you've got 0.301 divided by our decimal, 0.456. And in my calculator, I'm not using the rounded decimal. I'm using the actual one from the memory of my calculator. I strongly believe you should use a um, graphing calculator on these tests because it has more memory and more ability to do different things. So anyway, p is 0.6605. Six five and it goes on, rounding our answer to the nearest hundredth. We've got, well, in terms of where those decimals are, if we have the number and the decimal, then this number right here is the tenth, and this number right here is the hundredth. So fitting our number into that, we've got zero point six six zero five six five, and it keeps on going. But the idea is. To round to this number right here, we need to look at the next number. If it's 5 or greater, we go up. If it's 4 or less, we stay where it is. 
So then we're staying where it is, and the answer is 0.66 for number 1. Going over to number 2, the horsepower is directly proportional to fuel economy. So, we can say the horsepower, which we'll call H, is directly proportional to the fuel economy. 200 horsepower gets us 26 miles per gallon in fuel economy. Now we can solve for K by dividing both sides by 26. So 200 divided by 26 is another long decimal, 7.6923, and it goes on. Now that we know K, we can rewrite our original equation. H equals that number times F. What is the fuel economy of the 240 horsepower model? So we can put 240 in for the horsepower and just fill that into our same equation. Now to solve for F, we're dividing both sides by 7.69. So 240 divided by, and once again, I'm not dividing by 7.69, I'm dividing by the actual number in the memory of my calculator. And the answer comes out to 31.2 without any extra decimals. So here we actually don't even really need to round. The answer is 31.2. Coming over to number three, the number of cookies that a factory can make per minute is directly proportional to the number of employees who show up to work. So the number of cookies is directly proportional to the number of employees that show up. We have 315 employees present, and when that happens, we can produce 2,100 cookies per minute. Now we have enough information to solve for K. It's 2,100 divided by 315, and the number is 6.6 .6 with bar notation. So in other words, it's 6.6 .6 repeated. Now we know K, so C equals 6.6 .6 repeated times E. How many cookies can the company produce per minute if only 250 employees show up to work? So C equals 6.6 .6 repeated times 250. So we're filling in 250 for E, going ahead and multiplying that on the calculator, and we have 1,666.6 repeated. So is this reasonable? I think it is reasonable because less employees are showing up and less cookies are being made. Now all we have to do is round our answer to the nearest tenth. And so we've got um, the tenth is the first number after the decimal. So if the decimal is, if the decimal is right here, then we've got 1,666.6666, and it keeps going. So to figure out how to round it, we look at the next number. Is it 5 or greater? Yes, it is. So then our actual answer that we would have bubbled in on a question like this would be 1,666.7, because we went ahead and rounded up to round it to the nearest tenth. Number four, the amount of money earned by one type of career path is directly proportional to the number of college credits earned by the employee. If the salary of an employee with 60 college credits is 45000 per year, how many credits will an employee need in order to make 100000 per year? So the amount of money being made is directly proportional to the number of college credits. So when you have 60 college credits, you make 45,000 per year. So we can divide by 60 on both sides, and K equals 45,000 divided by 60, which is 750. Now we can rewrite the equation. So whenever you find out K, you can rewrite the equation. So M equals 750C. 
Now, how many credits will you need to make 100,000? We can plug in 100,000. Divide by 750 on both sides. And C equals 100,000 divided by 750. And the answer is 133.3 repeated. Please round to the nearest hour. That means that we want this many numbers. And we need to look at the next number. If it were 5 or greater, then we would have rounded this number right here up. But because it's 4 or less, we're going to go ahead and keep it the same. And the answer that we would have bubbled in here would have been 133. Going over to number 5 now. Now we have inverse proportionality. And inverse just means that instead of multiplying by k, we're going to take k and divide it by our number. So the force is inversely proportional to the length. A force of 5 is needed to compress a spring to a length of 3. Multiplying both sides by 3, we have k equals 15. And that's enough information for us to rewrite the equation. F equals 15 over L. How much force is needed to compress the spring to 2.5 meters? So F equals 15 over 2.5. All we did is plug in 2.5 for the L. And 15 over 2.5 on the calculator is exactly 6. So once again, this one didn't need to be rounded. The answer is simply 6. Going over now to number 6, the lifespan of a car battery is inversely proportional to the number of degrees. Now inverse means we're dividing instead of multiplying and the number of degrees below 80. So a battery stored at 60 has a 2.8 year lifespan. And in this question, D is a little more complicated. If it's being store stored at 60, well, we're talking about how many degrees below 80. So how many degrees below 80 is 60? It's 20 degrees below. So the number we need to plug in for D is 20. Now we can multiply both sides by 20, and we have K equals 2.8 times 20, which is 56. Now we know K. We can go ahead and plug that back in. L equals 56 over D. How long will a battery last if it's stored at 55 degrees? Well, we have L equals 56 over and what's the number of degrees below 80 here? Well, 55 is 25 degrees below 80. So now we have to divide 56 divided by 25. And the answer is 2.24 before we round. But we're rounding to the nearest tenth, which is this number right here. So we need to go ahead and look at the next number, the 4 and say, well, if it were 5 or above, then we would have to move our number up. But if it's 4 or below, we keep our number where it is. So the answer we would be bubbling here would be 2.2. .2. Next question. Here, the equations are given to us. y equals kx. y is 36 when x is 12. So let's just go ahead and work that out. y is 36 when x is 12. Dividing both sides by 12, k equals 3. So now we can rewrite y equals k uh, 3 times x. What's the value of y when x is 14? y equals 3 times 14. And 3 times 14 is 42. So the answer to this question is 42. On number 8, y equals k over x y equals 48 when x equals 8, k equals 48 times 8, which is 384. What's the value of y when x is 3? y equals 384 over 3.
So now we're just plugging in 3 for x in our new equation. And 384 divided by 3 is 128. Going over to number 9, y equals k times x, y equals 1 half when x is 3 fifths, y equals k times x, y equals 1 half when x equals 3 fifths. Now we can solve for k by multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply both sides by 5 over 3. That allows the numbers on the right hand side to cancel and k equals 5 over 6. Rewriting the equation with our new k, our new constant, 5 6 x. What is the value of x when y equals 1 fourth? So 1 fourth equals 5 6 x. And once again, to get rid of a fraction in this situation, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. So we have x equals 6 over 20, which simplifies to 3 over 10. And on a calculator, that's 0 0.3. So it doesn't need to be rounded to the nearest tenth. Thanks for listening to our lesson on inverse and direct variation. There are plenty more lessons at www.aspiretestprep.com. If you enjoy these lessons, you feel like you're getting something out of it, you can sign up for our online tutoring. You can recommend our tutoring to a friend. Or you can ask your school administrator to hire Aspire Test Prep to teach an SAT or ACT class at your school. If you have any questions, you can email us at tutoring at aspiretestprep.com or call the number on the screen, or go to our website. Thanks so much, and have a great day.